Welcome, English 1102 friends. I am Jake Sullins, and this is a video designed to walk you through the syllabus and guidelines for English 1102 Spring 2022. Uh, CRN 20623, this is the web version of this course. Uh, my name, as I just said, is Jake Sullins. My email is jsullins at highlands.edu. That is the email that you will use, not D2L, but this email, using your student email, hopefully, when you turn in work, when you need to contact me, anything like that, this should be your primary means of being in touch with me, jsellens at highlands.edu. That, that I'll get back to you the quickest using that email. Um, that's how I want you to email your work to me as an attachment. If you physically need to visit with me, my office is on the Cartersville campus. It's at, in the A building, 323B, uh, up on the top floor of the A building, the oldest building on campus. Uh, I know you may be scattered around everywhere, Douglasville, Rome, uh, you know, wherever. Um, if you physically need to see me, though, that's my office, and I do have office hours listed here. What I'm going to do, there's a separate video guiding you through the reading and assignment schedule. This video, as it says right here, is really just to get you through the basic guidelines of the course. What I expect from you all, what you all can expect from me, just really the basics um, is what this, the, the basic framework is what this video is designed to get you through. To be in this course, you need to have completed English 1101 with a greater C or better. That shouldn't be an issue. I, I check all those roles but as, when the semester starts. This is the second of two three-hour courses required of everyone who receives a transfer degree from Highlands um, or in the University System of Georgia, anywhere, really. Um, the really important part of this course description paragraph is this part, which has three parts to it. English 1102 continues to emphasize the principles of clear, concise, well-organized expression from English 1101. This continues to teach you good writing, same as English 1101. It sort of builds on those skills. It is an introduction to literary study, so many of the assignments are related to discussions of literary works. This is a literature-grounded uh, course, so most of the assignments are going to be you responding to and analyzing um, the readings that are on the syllabus. And the third part, this course includes training in research procedures and research writing. This is traditionally the research course, the course that's supposed to teach you the basics of research in college. Um, there's two research assignments in this course. There is a bibliographic essay, which will be the first thing to do this semester, and a research paper. They're both over the same topic. There are video guides to both of those, and I'm happy to answer any questions you'll have about both of those. But you will pick one topic and then use it to do both the bibliographic essay and then the traditional research paper. This course aims to offer you some ways to read fiction, poetry, drama. Those are the three required pieces that you have to read for this class at Highlands. Um, to come up with strong insights and to have informed, intelligent reasons for your opinions about things. A lot of good analysis is really, as much as people don't like to admit it, a lot of good analysis is grounded in, I like this because, or I don't like this because. That because becomes important because it is where a lot of, an, a lot of analysis jumps up from. There's some course objectives on here that you can see and uh, goals. Uh, the text and supplies. There's no print text for this course because all the readings and assignments are linked in D2L. Um, and they're all broken into reading modules. All the readings in this class are broken into topical things like Gothic and Grotesque or Innocence and Experience. Um, and those modules are laid out in D2L week by week. Um, so you don't need a print text because all the things that we're going to read are linked in there. Um, for this class to truly be successful, there are parts of this that are in... Uh, that are carryovers from my face-to-face -face classes and so they don't apply to you this is one of them for this class to truly be successful you must come to class with something relevant and useful to offer I obviously can't grade your part your in-class participation because we're never going to be in class most of what I derive from your participation grade is I can go in and see who has viewed course videos who has viewed course content viewed links um, most of your participation grade is going to come from turning in your work on time, but also me c coming in and seeing that you have watched, um, read the assignments, watched the videos, those kinds of things. That's how you're going to participate in this class, is me s being able to see that you have accessed most of the content, if not all of it. Um, 
again, you'd read the assigned work thoroughly and that should give you the opportunity, that should give you what you need to uh, respond to the assignments, whether they're exams or research papers or whatever. The basic assignment guidelines, uh, assignments must be typed in 12 point standard font with the body of the text double spaced when you turn in work. This is, this is how you'll turn it in, this is what it should look like. The top of the first page should include the student, your name, the class, English 1102, the date, um, and the assignment name, uh, you know, exam four, exam five, something like that. That information should be followed by the title of the paper. All formal papers, and we will write five papers in this class, the two research assignments and then three other short five or six hundred word papers. All formal papers require an assignment specific title. The short answer exams, you don't need a title, but when you're turning in a paper to me, it needs some kind of title. A paper to or research paper is not an effective title, and if a paper is about a particular text, something that we've read, don't steal that text's title and, and recycle it in to your title. Come up with your own unique, specific title. Uh, I will communicate with you. When I need to be in touch with you, I'll communicate via D2L announcement. That's the most common way I'm going to be in touch with you. If I need to tell you that an exam is posted or that we're changing a date or any other basic information, I'm going to announce it in D2L. If you need to respond to me or be in touch with me, GHC Outlook email about coursework. So you should check both of those pretty regularly, the D2L um, course page as well as the Outlook. If you have trouble reminding yourself to check email, the Outlook app on your phone is handy for doing that. Um, please, if you submit an assignment using an email system other than the Highland system and that assignment doesn't make it to me because of the college's spam filter, what matters to me is I didn't get it. So please, it, it, it may be inconvenient or frustrating for some people, but just use your student email to turn work into me and to communicate with me just because you don't run the risk of getting filtered out. Um, while I use D2L as a content service, I don't use its email system. I hate D2L email. If you email me in D2L, I, I may never respond and I may never see it. So please don't email me in D2L. Uh, please also don't turn in shared documents like Google Docs or something like that. When you turn in work, turn it into me as an attachment, um, not as a shared document not with SharePoint or Google Docs or anything like that. Save it as an attachment, send it to me. Don't send me PDFs because I can't edit those or mark them up. Um, what I want is attachments that are Docs or DocX, some basic format like that. The due dates for assignments are listed on the syllabus, on the other part of the syllabus, the reading and assignment schedule. All the due dates are listed there. They're also listed in the weekly um, modules in D2L. Late assignments are not accepted except in extenuating circumstances and with prior approval. If you know you're going to need to turn in something late, be in touch with me beforehand and let me know what's going on and, and we can try to figure it out. One other thing uh, that, that I think is important to point out, I grade for communicative writing. Um, in the grown-up world, almost all writing is communicative rather than expressive. The big difference between communicative and expressive writing, a truth of communicative writing is that the reader doesn't automatically care about you, the writer, nor does he find you or your perspective interesting. The reader will feel about you, your subject, and your writing, however the writing makes him feel. Um, I, what I really want to get at right here is I can't grade the paper you tried to write or wished you had written or would have written if you had started a little earlier. I can't grade that. All I can grade is what you turn in. Um, I care instead about what the what your paper communicates and how clearly it communicates because that's what I can grade. That's what I can read. Um, that's what I can engage with and try to help you get better at. Um, the how not to be rude section right here is mainly for face-to-face -face classes. There, there's really nothing in here that's going to apply to you guys because because you can't be off task in, cl in the classroom because we're not going to be in a classroom. Um, same with the hardware. Um, academic honesty and integrity though though is the same in face-to-face -face and online like we are. Plagiarism is academic dishonesty and ignorance of what plagiarism entails is not accepted. To avoid plagiarism, you must cite all quotations, summaries, and paraphrases. If you don't know what quotations, summaries, and paraphrases are, um, you can be in touch with me, you can get with one of the librarians, but if you probably at this point in your academic career need to know the different, what each of those three things are and the difference between quotation summaries and paraphrases. All three of those need to be cited 
because whether you are quoting, summarizing, or paraphrasing, you are using some other source that you are quoting, summarizing, or paraphrasing. And anytime you use an outside source, that source has to be cited, has to be recognized. Um, as well as any facts or ideas that are not common knowledge. You must be careful to put paraphrases and summaries in your own work. Um, on a very basic level, please, please, please don't plagiarize. Do your own work. You're defeating the point of this class anytime you, um, you plagiarize or commit some other kind of academic dishonesty. You'll have plenty of time to complete all the assignments. If you need help, you can, go, you can reach out to the tutorial center or you can reach out to me. I'm happy to help you. Um, but, but please, please don't, don't make me have to deal with plagiarism or anything like that. And then in turn, don't make me have, you have to deal with it if I, if I have to deal with it. Um, you are also, even though we won't be in physical class and won't have physical class time, you are free at any time to ask any kind of writing related question, whether it's about something we've, we're reading or something you have written and turned in and you're not sure about why you got the grade you got or you're not sure about some of my feedback on your work. No question about writing is stupid, so please don't keep yourself from asking a question because you're afraid it will sound obvious or unsophisticated. You don't have to worry about other students hearing it, but please don't be afraid of me, for sure. Um, I'm happy to, I wanna help you however I can, but often I can't. The best help I can give you is when you ask me something specific or mention some specific issue. Um, we won't, I obviously can't take attendance other than the way that I've already mentioned, which is checking to see who's read and accessed assignments and links. Um, please do not film or record or photograph any of the work, videos or links or anything like that, my exams. Um, please don't uh, copy or reproduce those in any way. Um, just because, uh, in a basic way, you're breaking my uh, academic copyright. If you need disability accommodations, uh, the college has resources available for students with disabilities. Um, you can be in touch with me, but you are better served just going through, directly through disability services and then they can reach out to me um, and we can take care of whatever you need. Uh, the college does have an early warning program that has to do with attendance and non-attendance two weeks in and then right around midterm satisfactory or unsatisfactory progress. So I'll, I'll be clocking in all of that for you guys. Um, here is the grade breakdown, and this is the, really the last part of this. There are seven exams for this class. There are really five exams and then a midterm and a final exam. Um, four of those exams are short answer exams. The final and the midterm, and then two other exams are short answer there will be something like 12 questions. You'll pick eight of them and answer them in a few sentences, three, somewhere between three and seven sentences a piece. The other exams, the other three exams, and I believe it is exam two, four, and six are short essays, 500, 600 words. Some, piece, some students get to seven or 800 words. Um, but those are the exams, they're 10% a piece, that gets you to 70%. The two research assignments that I mentioned are the other part of the grade. They're 15% a piece. The bibliographic essay and then the research paper. You'll pick a topic and you'll use it for both of those two research assignments. Um, and that's how you get the final grade for this course. If you continue to remain enrolled in this course, you're promising to attend class, you know, uh, electronically, virtually attend class by, com by working your way through the modules and videos and those kinds of things. Complete all assignments in a timely and conscientious way, not plagiarizing. Um, and be in touch with me promptly about any problems or concerns that you're having. If I need to alter the dates, material, and format of assignments, and I don't anticipate that, and if I do because we're online and this class is mostly asynchronous, um, it, it, shouldn't be an, uh, it shouldn't be any kind of problem if we need to shift due dates. Or if you need to be in touch with me and say, hey, I need to turn this in a little later, something like that. If I'm gonna change any kind of due date though, I'm gonna give you guys at least 24 hours of notice and let you know what's going on. Hopefully that gives you a good introduction to the guide, the basic guidelines, basic framework of the course. Um, so welcome to the course.